Hello there, good morning to you. Sorry, a little bit late today. Um, yeah, got a, a, a little bit, uh, a little bit late, sorry. Uh, there we go. Hello, Alison Lee in Tasmania, 8 pm over there. And, um, and Shirley, hello, Tina Carroll. Two carols together. All's good with me. Thank you very much. Uh, Ella, Mandy, Karen, Salome. Hello. Hello, Janet and Amanda and Sharon. Hello, Dawn on Facebook. Um, and Gillian, Elaine and Medjuli. And uh, hello, Darren, Heather, Nikki J. Hello, Helen, uh, Solvik. Hello to you. Morning, Fee. Morning, Stephanie. Morning, Jennifer. Morning, Sue. Sorry if I miss anybody like Linda and Jean. Hello and Dawn. Hello. And Veronica and Sue. I've got some new fabrics to show you. Ooh. So excited about these brand new fabric range. And we've, oh, honestly, we've got so much. Um, we haven't put everything on the website. We have had a little bit of a shopping spree yesterday. And then lots of deliveries of lovely new fabrics as well. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to bombard you. I'll do that on Wednesday. But I want to show you my new fabric range. Um, sunny in Preston, lovely. I read somewhere the other day, uh, the reason that this month is called May is because it may rain, it may be windy, we may have storms. We had a tornado here the other day. It may snow, it may be hot. I thought that kind of summed up this month. All over the place, sat in the garden, sunning ourselves the other day and then got stuck in torrential rain. All, all within an hour, ridiculous. Um, oh, Jenny Jones, what have you got? What new machine have you got? Um, morning, Kimberly and Nita and Linda. Off the dog centre to drop off mats, hoping for some puppy. Oh, fee, I'm envious. Thing is, I don't want to bring them all home with me. Oh, morning, Chris. Um, lovely and sunny in, uh, in Port Maddock. Lovely. Jane, lovely. It's dull in Woodall Spa. Oh. Sorting out cushion fabric panel, peg by fabric. Um, oh, hello, Michelle. That was Grace's mum. Hello to you. And uh, morning, Linda and Eleanor, sunny in Scotland. Lovely. Do you want to see my new fabrics? This is, um, it's not out yet, so I've only actually um, got a metre of each at the moment to get some samples made up with. Um, the whole range is going to be out. I'll show you them one at a time in, um, in June. Now, we've got June the 22nd as a launch date. Um, they will be going on to Create and Craft I think around about that time, but I haven't been told they're exclusive. So as soon as we get them in, we'll get them out to you. OK, and it is it is quite helpful, actually, to put things on pre-order like this rather than wait to the date, because then we know exactly how much fabric we need to order. We've ordered hundreds um, of metres of them, but um, at least we know if we do start selling out, then um, then we can get more in in time. So um, so that's why we're doing these on pre-order. Oh, no, Sheila's got the usual chest infection. Oh, say hello to everybody on the ward, Sheila. Haven't seen yet and need them all. <laughs> That's Patricia. OK, I can't remember what they're all called. So I'm going to have to have a look on the website. There's 10 all together in the collection and we're bundling them together. So you can either order individually um, by the half metre or we can, uh, we've bundled them together. Kim's done an offer for you this morning. So you can go for five one metre pieces. So we've, we've split those into two packs and you get 10% discount. Or you can go for one um, 10 metre pack. So te 10 individual pre-cut one metres of each of the fabrics. And again, you get 10% discount if you go for the big bundle and you have been it's been selling already this morning it's only just gone on and if you're a club member remember you get another 10 percent on top of that i'll never make a businesswoman um hello helen lovely and sunny in lockerbie says patricia thank you sarah morning to you um <laughs> Carol says, I thought it was only Melbourne who had all four seasons before lunch. Yes, it's, it's getting that way here. Hello, Sue in Brisbane. Hello to you. Right, so let me show you. Now, this is organic, 100% cotton fabric. This, all my sketches, and this one is called Wildflowers. Love the colours of these. Oh, and I've got some mix and matches for you as well. I'll show you those in just a second. So that's Wildflowers and blossom on lilac it's called a country walk because these are all of the things that i see as i'm walking bob um so this is i, th I think that's hawthorn and then animals of the woods so this is like foxy faces and the hare and the hawk 
and deer. Morning, Rita. And this one, I think, is ferns on white. Let me just double check. Pretty obvious that one, isn't it? Hold the line a minute. There are 10 of them. I'm scrolling. There we go. Ferns white, that one. And then this one. So they're all 112 centimetres wide. I'll just fold that so that you can see the design properly, the right way around. And this one is... So if you go to new arrivals, they're all there. Uh, wildlife. So that has the hare and the hawk on that one. On the, on the little... I loved it. it was, we're surrounded by um, Collie Western uh, stone where I live here and the, the walls are all covered in moss like this and I, I just think it's lovely. Um, so again, these are, these are all actual fences and styles and things that, um, that I find when I'm going for a walk. So that's the first five of the collection. And this is one bundle if you wanted to go for the pack of five. So you can go for them individually or you can go for a pack of five. So that's the first one. And then I just pop those there. This one I love. I have put into this because I'm going to make a bag with it later on. And I have also um, made a, a quilt, like a table runner, using seminal patchwork with this one. And so I'm just getting the name of it again. But it makes a lovely border. Um, what we called it? Is that rambling? This is rambling. So you can use it all as one piece of fabric or just cut a strip like this. That's what I'm going to put across the front of my bag. Um, and this one's got the deer and the fox and the hawk and the gate with a lock wrapped around it. Love that one. I think, I think that might be... No, it's not my favourite one. That's my favourite one. Anyway, I do like the animals. Um, so that's rambling. And then there's foxes. And this, these are on like a, a linen print in the background. So it adds a little bit of texture. And ferns on green. Then blossom on white. And finally, I can't remember what this one's called, just looking. Um, through the trees. So that's that one. So again, they're all, um, I'll show you my, my painting, I'll show you my etchings at some point. Um, but these are all my original artwork. It's all watercoloured, so I sketch and, uh, and then I watercolour them. And then uh, Vicky, my very talented designer, puts them all together and, um, and creates these amazing fabrics. So this is a, the second collection if you wanted to go for the five piece. So again, you can go for them individually. Or you can go for the bundle and save yourself 10% if you wanted to go that way. I'm so glad you're liking them. Um, oh, who's got a new toy there? That is Michaela. Oh, hang on a minute. You've gone. Um, the Innov M340ED embroidered some Oh, an embroidery machine. Oh, how lovely. Um, hello, Daniela in Germany. <laughs> Rita, Rita's got a ban on fabrics in the house. Well, uh, uh, didn't somebody say the other day a ban on fabrics from when? Maybe from July. Maybe choose choose a week later on in the year to have a ban on fabrics. You've still got a ban on fabrics. You can just choose when you have a ban on, on fabrics. Um, now then, so that, that's so, so excited. Um, we also have a new range of organic planes, and these are from. Um, Make and Believe, which is a craft cotton company fabric, and we've specifically chosen fabrics that will go with this collection. So, again, I can't remember all the names of them. They're brand new. Um, Make and Believe. I don't know. Just oh, we've got so we've got about four pages of new stuff at the moment. Where's the plain ones? Um, and these are organic cotton as well. And I don't know if you're aware. Um, from the research I've done on organic cotton, how important it is, not just to the environment, but to the workforce as well. Um, if cotton is grown organically, excuse me, 
it can't be grown for more than, I think it's a year, maybe two years at a time. Um, and then they have to leave the fields to fallow, but whatever grows in those fields has to be organic as well. Um, so there's no pesticides used in the, in the production of the cottons. Um, so all of the fertilizers and things are from whatever is planted um, when the cotton isn't growing, which is then dug back into the ground again so that they can start growing cotton again, which is one of the reasons why it's normally more expensive because it's such a long process. Um, there's no diesel used in the um, in machinery or anything like that, so most of the cotton is actually picked by hand. But it's really important that the workforce are looked after as well, so they're paid a good wage. Um, and they don't work ridiculously long hours or anything like that. So it's, it's not just the fact that organic cotton doesn't use pesticides. Um, it's, it's the whole environment and the whole situation where the, the cotton's actually being grown. Um, and when you, when you realise, I mean, do a bit of research yourself. There's loads of information on YouTube about it. But when you realise, like, kind of the backstory um, to organic cottons, you would expect it to be 10 times the price that it is. Um, and the quality is, is absolutely exceptional as well. So I just, just thought you might like to know. Um, hi, Nancy. And, uh, and Blodwin, yeah, it's, it's really interesting, Blodwin, when you look at it, because the, the obvious thing is, oh, no pesticides, but it, it's, it's more than that, it's a whole lifestyle. Um, thank you, Sarah. Um, oh, Jules is a new Half Yard Club member, having a fab time choosing what to make. Oh, glad you're enjoying it, Jules, welcome along. Um, Jean's, oh, Jean's ping was late. <laughs> Got a late ping. So I'm just trying to find the names of these organic planes. Maybe we've got five pages of new. Right, so that's Pelgrim. Here we go, down there, down there, down there. Right, moss green. So these are just the ones that we've chosen to go with the fabrics, because you're going to need a plane, aren't you? So that's the moss green. And you can just see how it works with, with all of them. Let me see if I can arrange these so that you can see them all in one go. So exciting to get new fabric, you know, and uh, and this is all I've got. <laughs> That's literally everything that is available for me at the moment. Okay, so moss green. I'm going to use that for handles on the bag that I'm going to make today. And then this one goes really well, and it was quite unexpected. Let me just look for colours. Mulberry purple. Isn't that gorgeous? And it goes with the foxes, it, go, it goes really, because you know, it picks up on the colour of the thistles, so it goes well with the, the animals, with that one, with that one, with that one. It's just beautiful, really, really lovely. And again, if you're going to go organic, why not go for the matching organic as well? These are available now, by the way. And again, I only went on this morning, and it's been really busy for those. Um, this one I'm going to use for the lining of the bag I'm making today. It's called Light Taupe. But look, it's perfect for that one. It's perfect for that one. Just the same colour as the background. They're just, just lovely, just really lovely fabrics. And the colours are quite, quite different for this range as well, I think. There's one with that one. So that's the Light Taupe. And what else have we got? These don't necessarily all match with the fabrics, but I'll take you through them anyway. This one is a light green. Then, obviously, the brown's going to go really well as well. I think we're just calling it brown. Let me double check. Um, yeah, brown. Then, that was light taupe. Pale green. Sea foam blue is another one. Oh, actually, goes nice with that one, doesn't it? <gasps> so that's sea foam. Then we have um, rust. I think there's a better match for that one. This one is burnt orange. And that goes nicely with that one. And then there's one more, I can't remember the name of, bear with me, ochre gold. And the ochre gold actually goes really well with the foxes. Anything with the foxes on, really, or the deer. Rush. So that's those. <laughs> New fabric range, so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so what would you make with it? And so I've made um, a seminal patchwork table runner. I've made cushion covers. Um, I have made a couple of bags. I haven't got them here because they went off to an exhibition and, uh, and haven't come back again yet. But I'm going to be making a bag, you know, the curved top tote, which is a download on the website. I'm going to make a variation of that one. Oh, it's going to be a little bit different than the instructions, but maybe that's something that you could do as well. Um, I'm very good. Thank you, Lily. How are you? Hello, Vi. In, uh, where are you? In West Yorkshire. Hello. Oh, so nice. So nice. So exciting. So that's the, the planes. If you want a reminder of anything, then do let me know, won't you? We've got a forest green in piping. That goes really well too, but I haven't got a sample of it there. If you wanted to add anything like that to your orders. Um, now, don't forget... Um, my friend Julia's live for the first time. Oh, hello. Hello, Rita's New York friend Julie, live for the first time. So again, available individually. But if you wanted to go for one, two, three, four, for those five, you get 10% off. Or these five, you get 10% off. Or all of them, you get 10% off, which means that club members actually get 20% off. Um, so don't forget to put in your code. Sorry, I've missed a load of your messages on Facebook for some reason. Um, hello, Laura. Um, Sarah says, I must have had a premonition, but all the organic fabric colours that match your new range. <laughs> so you need the new range now as well. Um, the brown and sea foam together. They, oh, they do. That was uh, Alana. They do go well together, don't they? Um, Jilly's got a pink parcel with rainbow flowers. So I've lost my mouse then. Uh, so, a gnome's behind me. Yes, the gnomes are from the book and it is on pre order. I can show you that later on if you like. And uh, there's Rita's friend Julie. Hello, Rita's friend Julie <laughs> in New York. Welcome along. Um, oh, Mary's got that uh, embroidery machine as well. Lovely. Okay, so that's this. I might show you again later on. It's always, it's always really exciting when you get a new fabric range. And this one is, um, well, they're all, they're all kind of close to my heart because they're all my drawings of what I see. Um, and all of my fabrics have been kind of experiences. It's almost like a bit of a diary. But this one particularly is, because um, I walk around these woods every day, Unless it's raining, of course. Got a dog that doesn't like the rain. So it's just nice to see. It's almost like having a scrapbook of things that we see around the woods. Um, right. Thank you, Mickey. I'm glad you like them. Helen's making Maddie. What do you do with all the bags you make? Who, who's that? Oh. Uh, do you keep them all, or are your friends lucky enough to receive one for birthday presents? I, I keep I keep the ones that I'm going to need to show you over and over. I am looking at shelves full of bags, to be honest. Um, a lot of them will go to charity, um, or we do giveaways sometimes on the on Half Yard Club, things like that. So, um, so that's what I do with them. I don't keep all of them. And uh, oh, Anne, Anne, what does Anne say? Oh no, watching from Paul's. Oh, you've gone. Paul's bedside again. Um, I give him my love, won't you, Anne? Tell him we're all thinking of him and um, we're all going to send positive thoughts for you as well. Dawn loves the new fabric range. Lovely. Okay, so that's that. You know, considering the amount of new stuff we've got, I'm, go I'm only going to show you a little bit, but I, I do still have quite a lot uh, to show you. These are really unusual. Now, I've, I think I've dropped the one that was wrapped up somewhere. Sorry, do bear with me. I've got so much stuff around. Okay, I wanted to show you how these come to you because um, they, they actually come folded up into that size with a piece of string around them. They're, they're really quite sweet. So these are individual fat quarters and they're hessian, but it's quite a soft hessian. But be aware it's a loose weave because it is a hessian. Um, so it's quite sturdy, but I think for bag making, then these are absolutely perfect. You wouldn't wear it, it's a bit scratchy to wear, um, but they're nice and strong and sturdy. So I'm thinking maybe um, 
you could do a seat cover in it that would be lovely but storage storage boxes in a nursery i think would be really nice cushion covers would be absolutely fine um, to be honest i would put some interfacing such as g700 on the back and a round handlebag that's a nice idea oh that's a nice idea laura Urgh. um sending our thoughts to you andrea just been to order flowers for mum's funeral Oh, with the ever thinking of you, it's not, not a nice time, is it, Andrew? Um, now, we've got a few different ones of these, and they're all really fun. And I just love the way they come to, because you're going to use the string as well. So they're elephants, they're only a couple of pounds each. But again, it's, it's hessian. I've never seen anything like these before, like a printed hessian. But and they're gorgeous. Now, they are pre-cut, obviously, because they're going to come to you individually. Um, I'll see you later, Jenny. Look at the ducks. <laughs> they look like duck emojis. <laughs> and dinosaurs. My granddaughter would actually, no, my granddaughter and my grandson would love these. I think um, Finn's first words were raw. Raw. And children's bags. Yes, they'd make lovely children's bags. Little backpacks, maybe. You might need a couple of them. Um, you know, one for the front and one for the back. Oh. Morning, coffee. Morning. Tea, biscuits. Don't don't ask them. Thank what, you. What mat is that? It's the ironing mat. I can tell when you started without me because you're a bit dark. Am I dark? Yes. And you haven't put your socks on. Don't put what on? Not got the lighting right because yeah. I started without him. Makes all the difference. Should, should I clear you a path next time? <laughs> Are we all right? Am I in focus? Are uh, you in focus? Yeah? Am I bright enough? Not really. <laughs> Look at elephants. You are now. <laughs> so the, oh, Shirley says morning. Rita says uh, hi, Gary. Dawn hi. says morning. <laughs> Any more coffees? No more coffees. Stop it. Um, so yeah, maybe go for a couple. One for the front and one for the back. Would be really nice. Oh, hello, Zoe. She loves the videos. Thank you. Kids summer bags with waterproof canvas fabric lining. Oh, I'll tell you what you could do is put some eau de coat on it. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, Sylvia says hi. hi. Laura wants a vanilla latte. She's posh, Laura is. <laughs> the whole neighbourhood must be listening to us yelling at each other. <laughs> uh, Shelley wants a stiff drink. So that's that. I wish I could find the one that was wrapped up. And then, oh, bear with me a sec. Bear with me, bear with me. I want to show you this. And because this is going to be the sew along for the end of the month, have a look at that while I find it. So that again, brand new fabric. This is little Johnny. Isn't that fun? It's just so sweet. And we are going to be making. Um, Oops, right at the bottom of my bag. That. So if um, you are a club member, your newsletter will be going out on Monday with all of your materials. I think it's the 27th, um, the sew along. This is dead easy. It's not going to take us an hour to make it, but it's just a really handy um, little pin cushion and with a ribbon on there so that you can store your clips as well and it's got a hanging loop on the end there too and the, the button's just for decorative so you don't have to add that if you don't want to um, but that's what we're going to be making on the 27th so again that will be um, in your newsletter on Monday and I will post on, on Facebook and on YouTube nearer the time if you wanted to have a so long watch your fabric requirements. So obviously you don't have to use this fabric, but I just thought it was really sweet and it's cheery and it's summery and it's, it's just a useful little pink cushion. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, Sarah, get your spanner out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Has she got a spanner out? Um, right. Okay, um, so yeah, look, really lovely, bright, fresh colours on that one, um, which I, I, I just think it's really pretty. Why well, don't you have a tortoise fabric, Linda? That's a good idea. Oh, morning, Mickey in Iowa. Is it Iowa? Welcome along. 
Uh, wonderful voice. There's a non-native speaker of a wonderful voice. Oh, thank you very much, Daniela. And clear pronunciation. Thank you. Um, is Sarah there? <laughs> Might need your help, Sarah. Amanda says hi. He's gone now. He's, he's gone. He's going to sort out your gins, I think. Um, oh, Trace has only just been notified you're live. Oh, that's, that's a bit late. Been here for a while. Right. Now we've got some other bits and bobs and haberdashery for you too. So felt bundles. Now these are four inches by 18 inches. It's nice, quite synthetic, but it's a nice synthetic. It's still quite soft. Um, oh, Vienna. Hi, sweetie. Morning. Grandad's just gone. She's just bought me a cup of coffee and he's gone again. Um, she says, hi, Grandma and Grandad. Just cutting out a dress and looking at new stuff on the website at the same time. Oh, of course you're ready to start using those fabrics. Why shouldn't you? So we've got lots of colours for you. So there are kind of the neutrals. There's greens. There's blues. Thinking gnomes. We've got reds. And we've got pinks. Now, there won't be enough to make a gnome body. But hats, jackets. And there we go. That's what you're going to get. Applique, accessories. There's five strips in each one, and so they're 18 inches long and four inches wide. And let me just wrap that back up again. And that's what you're going to get. So if you have I done that, no, I've done that the wrong way. Like, have I done it the wrong way? I don't know. But I'll wrap it back up again because somebody's bound to order this one. Bear with me a sec. But again, it's nice quality. I think it's nice to have the shades like that as well. So you could be making a hat for maybe, oh, maybe it's not quite enough for a hat for one of those. You could do the floor and the fauna and the petals for those ones. But I so said they're just nice, nice to have that amount without having to buy yardage of felt. Um, hello, Helen in the Isle of Man. Uh, I'd like to make any fabric cushions now. Now, she says, Patricia, now. This is rather nice um, for bag handles. Isn't that fabulous? It's like a, a like, like rope. I don't know what is it, a Hessian one? But yeah, I think that'll be lovely for bag handles. So this is by the, um, by the meter. And that's, that's brand new for you. We have bells because i'm getting we're thinking gnomes um because we have um ding and dong have both got bells on their hats and moss has a bell on his hat i haven't got moss here yet he's not back from an exhibition yet so we've bought these little packs of bells for you so there's 10 silver 10 gold uh eight of the large ones and then while we were there looking at bells, nothing to do gnome wise but look! Snowmen bells! And those are just twos, so you don't have to buy hundreds of them. And Santa bells! They're nice on cards, those, wouldn't they? So if you're getting it stocking up on your Christmas bits and bobs. Love those. Ah, oh, reason twice and have a number of time. Good advice, Laura. <laughs> um, you can't have enough bells. Pull the other one. Then we have, oh, now we've got some lovely trims as well. This is, um, this is Kim's doing. She loves a trim. Can't remember what they're all called, but they are under new arrivals still. So let me just line these up so I can whoop, show you all of them together. So that's a really pretty one. That's all cotton. And... We've had similar in a vintage colour before now, but that one is in white. And then we have a little bit of frou-frou. And that's broderie anglaise. That's already pre-gathered. That's the one that she's used. I think I've only got half the roll of that left. And jumbo rickrack in the cream. So we've got nice neutral colours with these. And we've got jumbo rickrack. In white as well. There you go. And what else have we got? We've got that one in a black. And there is a vintage one as well, but I can't find it. 
There's one of the wider vintage ones that we have for you too. So let's just pop all of those to one side. Oh, now then. We also have... Yes, they are soft, Laura. They are synthetic, but they're nice quality felts. Um, they don't feel synthetic, actually. Very fussy about the felts. The, um, the supplier that we went to yesterday had lots of, lots of pre-cut pieces of felt and we were feeling them and opening packets and everything. No, no, it's not good enough, not good enough. But these were lovely. We are going to be getting in some natural felts and they will be in 18 inch squares. And uh, we've got the, like, the mulled greys and the, who's made out of those? Like tatty. Um, I think it's just tatty or maybe sage, but um, sorry, moss, but I haven't got him here. Uh, but those will be bigger pieces. So if you are if you are thinking gnome thoughts, um, then then watch this space. It shouldn't be too long before those are here. Um, yes, threads. We've got some brand new threads for you. I'm going to be using the um, wisteria because it goes really well with. I'm going to show you it again. It's my fabric, and we're hoping to get more from this collection in stock as well. So that's those. Got loads of ribbons for you too. Lots of colours of those. Oh, and got bows in red. So little packets of four of those. And we've got new elastic. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't know if I should be showing you all of those, but anyway. I'm going to stop there. I think that's that's in the enough newness for one day. Hello Anita in South Carolina. The Rattan for Tati's hair. I got that off um, Amazon. But you, I did have to order quite a lot. But I wonder if I can get hold of it. I'll see if I can try and get hold of it for the website. Because um, it comes in, in bundles. But I had to buy something like 20 bundles or something. I can't remember. But have a look on Amazon because I'm, I'm sure that's where I got it from. Will the squares be like the grey heart felt? Yes, Laura. Yes, the mould stuff. It will, it will be just like that. Um, and it's all natural. It's uh, viscous um, felt. That that will be coming in soon. Should we make a bag? Look at that. It's 22. I've just been showing you stuff for all that time. Uh, does the light green thread go the... Ooh. I brought my straight stitch machine to show you as well. Um, does the light green go with the fabric? Yeah. It does. Um, we're hoping to get some of the dark green in, um, but they hadn't actually got any. They're completely out of stock. This is Coates Moon thread, um, but we will hopefully get some dark green in. But yes, that one does go quite nicely with the fabrics too. The bag behind me, Patricia, is the curved top tote bag. So I'm going to do a variation of that using the big round red metal rings, which are new as well on the website too. A purse in the shape of a gnome. That's a nice idea. I've got a known project coming up for Half Yard Club, maybe later on. Could we get white thread? We can get white thread, Laura, yes. Yes, we definitely can. We could probably get that in, in stock pretty soon, actually. Try and get some on for later on. Later on today, hopefully. Right, should we do some sewing? So, um, please learn. I don't know who that is. Somebody's texting me. So I've printed off my ins instructions with this one. It is a download on the website. So look for curved top tote. You don't need to print them off because there isn't a pattern. Um, but I've printed them off just so I make sure that I'm following my own instructions. Um, morning from Cornwall. So Shelley, hello to you. Can I ask the canvas fabric you've got? Does it come in half a metre? Is that the the Hessian ones, Erica, that I showed you just now? I'm not sure, not sure which canvas you mean. If it's the Hessian ones, no, they're in fact quarters pre-cut. They're not in half metre pieces. Um, I was just run out of white thread. <laughs> uh, if it's canvas, any of the canvas on the website does come um, in, in half metres. If it was something else that you're asking about, just let me, let me know which one you wanted, Erica, and I shall inform you. There is still going to be a mug bag, June. I just haven't got around to making it yet. Um, 
because I want to make it up um, before I do it. And so I've got to make it, then video it, and then and then show it to you. So it's um, it's just a little time consuming. Okay, so. Now that's a lot of that. I don't think I need that much. Whoops. So with the curved on throwing fabric on the floor. So with the curved top tote, just bear with me a second when I just pick up what I've dropped. Um that out of the way. On the instructions and on this bag, that was actually a viscose. Um so I used uh Decaville Light to make it a little bit more sturdy. And this one I'm going to use H640. And Now I've just dropped a piece of that. I am going to use for the outer bag. I'm actually going to put a stripe. You remember the fabric that I said earlier on, um, that I like so much. I'm going to put a stripe of that in between the two fabrics here, and there it is. So I've got two pieces of each of those for the outer bag. And then I'm using the pale taupe as much as perfectly for the lining. And the oh, what did we call this? Was it moss? I'm going to use that for the handle. Um, and I've put some G700 on the wrong side of that because I just thought um, it was a little bit flimsy on its own. But I didn't want to use the ACH40 because that can be a little bit too much. Uh, waterproof canvas, I shall ask my daughter, Gay, she does all of the ordering, so I sh I'll ask the question. So let's pop that to one side. I will need my iron. So let's just plug that in. I need a bigger studio. If you're watching, Gary, I need an extension on my studio. Um, Shelley's getting ready to say the doll's house from Half Yard Club, finally. Um, Shelley's been going crazy making all shapes and sizes of the cinch cube bags. Made wonder, what's a cinch cube? What is it? Oh, post a picture, Shelley. I don't know what a cinch cube is. Need a bigger bank account. <laughs> I could all do with a bigger bank account, I think. Um, if I put that there. Put that there. I'm bound to spill it. Right. So I'm going to sew these together first of all, and then we'll cut them to the exact size that I need. So again, all of your sizes and everything are in the downloads, so I'm not going to give you them here. So I'm just going to sew this one in between those two pieces, like so. Just make sure I've got them all the right way around. Oh, thank you. Irons fell over. Didn't notice that, Rita. Mind you, I haven't switched it on. Better do that. The one inch cinch bag I made a couple of weeks ago. Do you know, Shelley? I do so much stuff, I can't remember what I'm doing from one minute to the next. Okay, and let's bring in this beauty. Look at those, it's gorgeous. So, this is my straight stitch machine, which just needs threading. Hold the line, love it. What's going on there? I've got that a bit tangled. Uh, that goes in there, that goes down, that goes there, that goes there. There we go. And when I start going with this, you realise why I love it so much. It's so fun. Now, I'm apologising if this is going to sound noisy. I'm expecting it will do. But it does go at quite a speed. Right, so I'm just using the edge of the foot, which happens to be a quarter of an inch on this foot. Was that terribly noisy? I do, I do apologise if so. So that bit on the top, and then I'm going to put the smaller bit on the bottom. Again, just make sure that they are the right way up. Then a pack of organic planes to go with your fabrics. That's a nice idea, Laura. I'll have a look at those. As I've only come in this morning, so I'll take a look at doing that. And there we go. Uh, 
and then same for this one. Um, Patricia, it reminds me of holiday visits to see the family in the Lake District. It is a little bit, isn't it? I don't know, Lana, it's amazing. So quick. You don't have to go quick with it. You know, it has got a speed control on it, but when you do a lot of sewing or quilting or free motion or shearing even, it is a fabulously quick machine. And because it's a straight stitch, I mean, I'm not selling this machine. I'm not on commission or anything like that for it. Um, but I just love it. It was uh, the best investment. I wish I'd have bought one years ago. Um, right sides together. It's only got one hole underneath there. So it'll only do a straight stitch. But it just means that your fabric doesn't get tangled up. So you know sometimes when you start sewing right at the edge of your fabric, it can't disappear into the feed dogs because it's only got a little hole. And it's only got the one stitch, but it does it really well. Right. So I've got that in two pieces. So then I will need to iron my H6. So, oh, no. Should we put it down to size? Let's iron it first. So I'll use the bigger mat to give that a quick press. And then I'll need to cut it to the right size because I know, June, it is a TL2200 QVP. Funny names, aren't they? But if you, I think it's the only straight stitch machine they do. That's it. It's so heavy. Um, it's absolutely solid. It does come with a massive extension table as well. Um, but it, it's just, I just love it. It's, it's just so, so quick. It's amazing. And the stitches are just perfect every time. So all it's got on it is a reverse and a stitch length. That's all you need. And it, it does have snippers, but if you put your foot down on the foot pedal, put your heel down, it automatically snips. And it doesn't mind sewing without fabric. So if you're skipping across, you know, if you're chain piecing, um, with other machines that have had it, uh, machines don't like sewing fresh air and it, it kind of gets all clogged up and, and nests and this one doesn't, it doesn't seem to mind that at all. Love it, love it. And it was from Franklin's, if you are interested. And again, I'm not on commission. I'm, I'm just very happy to recommend something that I love. So there you go. Um, Nancy says, Dukas are great. I have the XE Quilt and Pro, highly recommended. Don't know what that one is. Um, it's not the new machine anymore, Geraldine. This is the one I normally use down in the studio. Um, I don't bring it down here because it's so heavy. So it won't do buttonholes, it doesn't do decorative, it doesn't do zigzags. It does one job and it does it incredibly well. Um, but for quilting, it does come with a, a free motion foot and for shearing elastic it's amazing right i'm going to line those two pieces up and use my lining fabric as a template oh measurements were better than i thought it's the right size anyway so then let's put some h640 onto the wrong side i think this is a nice quilted as well um, pressing fabric and watching as that's allowed. Carol's just bought a vintage sewing machine. How lovely. I've got quite a I don't know if they work actually, my vintage ones. I've never actually tried. Let me just switch that off a second while I put some water in it. Um, Margaret bought a brother from Craig and Craft last weekend. The brother's very nice. I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed with that machine as well. Let's just... Put a bit of water in there because it works better with steam, I find. Ooh, spitting at me. I have a DDL8700 5000 SPM. Wow. Not heard of that one. So I'm not I'm no expert on, on sewing machines, but I, I do love this one very much. Um, no, I didn't, Sarah. See the programme about making uniforms for the coronation. The main guy swore by his old duke, and I didn't see that. 
Uh, Alon is making reggae coloured placemats for her sister <laughs> with her Elna. Um, she's good. Um, Helen, Helen was just asking about Lisa. I spoke to her the other day and things are going her way. It's just taking time. So, yes, I think she's in a good place at the moment. It's just that um, we wish that things could rush on a little bit, but things are just taking time. Hello, Beatrice in Connecticut. The drawstring box bag. Making a water bottle carrier. How lovely. We've still got drawstring box bags on the website if you wanted a kit, by the way. Um, have a look at the different downloads while you're there as well. We're getting uh, there are quite a few um, on the website at the moment with more, I think, going on later on today. There might be an April one going on. So if you're, if you're stuck for ideas, and downloads are great because they're instant. You know, you don't have to wait for something to arrive in the post. You just download it, print it off, ready to go. That feels like H630, not 40. What have I got? I think I'm using H630. No, it's 40. It is H640. Right, so I'm just trimming the H640 down to the same size as the fabric. And again, I'm not going to quilt it now. I'm just going to sew along the two seams. But I do think it would look lovely if it was quilted. And let's do this one. Kathy's in Boston in the USA. Hello, welcome along. Hi, Reem. Right, I'll have to see if I can see it on catch up, Karen. Have a look at that. That sounds interesting. Um, right, let's, let's do this. I think I'll go over the other one as well. Method in my madness here because I'm actually prepping the show for Create and Craft. Need to get some samples made up, so I thought I'd do it now. Um, cut that out and then I'll go back over that again. And then we'll put it together. It'll be, it's, it's actually quite quick once you get going because I haven't put any pockets on the inside. And did I use a fastening? I can't remember if I got a fastening on this one. Let me have a look. No, no fastening either. You could put a magnetic snap on it. But I don't think this style really needs it. Um, but I am going to make the handles a little bit different to the instructions. There we are. Save that bit for later. Just trim this off. Our pan has recorded it. Don't watch much TV, really. I watch a lot of the old stuff. I, I love, at the moment, keeping up appearances. I, I didn't like it at the time when it was out, but I love it now. Um, so I always like to watch that one. And The Good Life, if that's on. I'll sit and watch that. Um, doing well, thank you, Reem. Uh, Pat says, remember learning to sew in mum's old hand singer sewing machine. I, yeah, my mum had... I don't know if it was a singer, actually. I can't remember. I wouldn't have taken too much notice at that age. But, yeah, mine was um, a hand crank machine that I learnt to sew on. Um, right, so I'm just, if, if I was quilting this all over, I wouldn't be so bothered about making sure that the H640 is stuck. And if you give it a good blast of steam um, on a big iron, it tends to stick really well. Um, right. These are types of woodings for different projects. Can you explain? I, we must get around to putting this kit together. We were going to do like a sample, um, a sample kit of different types of um, interfacings and woddings. So basically, with the with the fleeces like this, I wouldn't use it for a quilt that you were going to sleep under, um, but you could actually quilt it. So maybe for table runners and wall hangings and things like that. Um, for a bag, it's still quite soft. But imagine if that was a piece of fabric on its own, it wouldn't anywhere near stand up like it does. So it's easy to sew through. H640 is very slightly thicker than H630, and they are iron-on, as you can see. So those are the two that I use most of all um, for bag making, actually. If I wanted something firmer, then I'd go for a foam. And we've got a couple of those on the website. We've got Stylville and Bosal. 
and that's again it's polyester single-sided fusible but you can see how that stands up so you're going to get a firmer bag but still easy to sew through so i'll um i'll try and maybe on wednesday should we do that on wednesday i'll get a sample of all of the different ones that we sell obviously i can only show you the ones that we sell because i haven't got any more and um we'll have a chat about the different ones on wednesday i'm sure we've done that before i don't remember when um right now we need a template and I'm going to cut the circle shape from the top so I'll cut it from one lining piece to start with so let's fold this in half oh I went a bit out of focus then just crease the centre and then I'll place that over the top so trying to make sure that, that is in the centre. So that should be a right angle and that should be a right angle. And that looks about right. And then we'll cut this out. If you don't have a template of the right size, then you could just kind of measure from the corner um, so put your ruler here and then just mark at uh, increments all the way around and join them up and that should give you the right size. So I've got that. So I'll use this as a template. Like so. I've never tried making tassels, Reem, to be honest, but I would have thought that fabrics would fray quite a lot. I don't know. And unless you cut them on the bias, I suppose. So there's one. We do this with all of the pieces, including the second lining piece. There's two. Oh, I need to sew along those seams as well, don't I? Let's cut out the shapes first. What can I do with those? Save them for later. And then the final lining. <laughs> yes, Georgina. I needed a six inch circle template and that was a, a, a perfect size. And there's the final lining here. Sun shining where Jean is, lovely. Um, with Deckerville light. The, the one in the instructions is Deckerville Light, Linda. I haven't got any with me at the moment. Oh, that's gone a bit wrong. Which is why I'm using H640. But Deckerville Light would work really well. You just get a different feel with it. Okay, then I'm just going to top stitch just along each side of that piece. So, what's happened to you? My thread's gone a bit baggy. What are you doing there? Bag, we don't want baggy thread, do we? Right, let's just pull that through. That's better. So I'm going to lengthen the stitch a little bit. And just sew across each side. So it just gives a nice finishing touch, I think. Oh, hi, Lisa. Nice to have you back. Hope you're all right. What's that my thread there? Let me snip that off because that's really going to annoy me. There we go. There we go. Advice for Joyce for doing collars, anybody? Have you followed a pattern, Joyce? Because um, you should have instructions in there. If you're a Half Yard Club member, there is a video on making a shirt, so that, that might help. Uh, with the collar and the cuffs and everything on there. Um, I'd say interfacing really important. That's so down there. Mm. 
Now, because I'm going to see, it would look nice quilted, wouldn't it? If I've got time to do the whole lot, I think that would look really nice. Um, but I haven't, so we're not going to. Now, with the handles, four inch strip of fabric, and I've put the G700 on the wrong side just so that it's not quite so floppy. But G700 is it's just like a piece of cotton. So it's woven and it's, it's just like having two pieces of cotton together, um, but it's not too chunky. Now with the handle, what I'm, what I'm going to do, if I just explain, the handle is going to go on here and in the instructions that go facing down there right now. But I'm going to use the new rings that we have on the website as decorations. So I think these are going to look lovely. So I've cut a smaller piece of fabric, folded the long sides to the centre. Can you hear my neighbours? I think they're chopping down trees. Thoughtful. Um, and just sewn down each side and left the ends open because those are going to disappear into a seam. And then we'll thread those through the loop. Gosh, they are noisy. And I'm going to sew this a quarter of an inch from the end of the circle because there's going to be a seam allowance there. So let me just get a clip and clip that there. And we'll need to do four of these. Another one here. Clip that there. So my handle is actually going to be a little bit shorter. Do you know, I've only cut two of those, which is a silly thing to do. So just let me just cut another one from there, from there. So I'll need to sew down both sides of that one. And the same on here. Okay, then I'll show you how to, how to do those. So let's sew these on to start with. Sorry, I thought I was on another camera. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. And no. Whoops. So those, those are quite weighty, actually. They're nice, nice quality loop. And again, facing down. So I've got that. And then I'll need to do the same on the other side. So I'll just sew down each side of this one. So again, these go through one of the loops. So I've done that. So I've just, just lost YouTube for a second. Um, How do we get in there then? There we go. Sorry about the noise. So again, through the loop, facing down, quarter of an inch from the end. Or just so it doesn't interfere with the with the seam allowance there. Oh, that was a little bit close. And the final one, whoops, again through the loop. Quarter of an inch from the end, because I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, that's why I'm saying quarter of an inch from the end. And I'll just rescue that before it falls off the table. And just tap that in place. I'm just going to take that one off and move it over because that was interfering with my seam allowance a little bit. That'll make sense when I sew it together. Why? That needs to be a quarter of an inch away. So I've got that. Okay. Now with the straps, because these are going to go through the loops from this side and fold over. So I don't want a raw edge on the end here. So the easiest way to neaten this is to you fold the long sides to the centre, then in half and press it. But before we sew it, we're going to fold this back on itself 
So the folded edges are together and you've got the raw edges here and we're going to sew straight across. Just make sure all the edges match up. And the same on this side. So fold, fold it back on itself. So the raw edges are here. And, oh, they're so noisy next door. And then we'll do that. A beach bag. I'm sure I have Sharon, but I can't remember which one. Half yard bags. And, oh, I can't remember. I'll, I'll have a look. Anybody got one of my books with a beach bag in it? Then you fold that the right side out. So that's sewn straight across the end. And just turn that the right side out. And then you get a nice little seam across the bottom there. Then I'm going to sew down each side. If you do have a little bit here poking out of the end, then we can cut that off at an angle, just so that you don't see that bit inside. Same on that one. Yeah, sorry about the chainsaw noises. Wasn't expecting that this morning. And then we'll sew down each side. Butterfly canvas. Yes, Eric, is that the one where you're asking if they're in half metres? Yes, they're by the half metre. So if you ordered one unit, you'll get half a metre. So I'm just going to sew down each side. Thanks, Laura. And down there. Whoop, that's a bit wobbly. But we'll put those on later on when we finish the rest of the bag. Okay, so that's that one. That's that one. Just make sure that they are the same length. Yep. Now from the bottom corner of each one of these, I'm going to cut a two inch square. So that's going to make the bag base square. Yeah, it's not not so much the noise of that chainsaw, it's the smell of petrol, it's really strong. Might get me aircon on in a minute. Hi Alan. And this one. And cut those off. And we need to do the same on the lining ones. And then we can put it together. It's quite a big bag, so you do have room if you wanted to add pockets um, to do that. Um, that as a pocket, I think, might have been quite nice as well. If you've got more time, or you could put a zip pocket on the inside. So plenty of room with it. It's a decent sized bag, this one. And the kind of thing that if you do want to make it firmer, then you could use one of your foams for this as well. Remember, this is a download on the website. So all of your instructions are going to be on there. And the same with the lining. Yeah, do, do, we'll, have, we'll have smelly vision one day, won't we, Blodwin? Scratch and sniff telly. Smelly telly. It's going to happen. They, they say anything you think about will happen at some point. Um, put the pen down somewhere. There we go. So then two inches from the corner of each one of the lining pieces. Um, oh, thank you, Amanda. There is a beach bag in, in the Half Yard Summer Collection. Thank you. I can't remember what I've done from one book to the next. You know, I've got so many now and so many on the go. And this one. I've let my coffee go cold. Like so, right, then we'll start sewing it together. So make sure these are out of the way and pop the lining on top, like so. And we're going to go across the top, around here, and across the top that way. That's why I needed to put the straps a quarter of an inch away because I want this seam to be nice and snug so when it turns through, the edge of the strap is sitting right on the seam like that. It is a new fabric range, Lisa. 
Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's coming out, um, they say the 22nd of June, but if it comes out any sooner, then we'll get it to you sooner. So let's sew across the top there. Make sure that this, because this is weighty, it wants to kind of swing away. So just make sure that you hold that in place and keep it straight. And you can put a clip in there if you wish. Right up to the edge of the strap and then around the curve. Now again, pin this if you want to, if that makes it easier. So take your time around the curve. Don't use a stitch that's too long. Um, I'm on two millimetres with this one. And just keep lining up that edge. That's about to go on the floor. And around here. And I'm coming back up to the strap here. So again, I just want to sew just alongside it. And stop there. Oh, one more stitch. And then back across the top. If you wanted to reverse over the handle, that makes it a little bit stronger. Okay. And then we'll snip across the corners. Just make sure I've caught all of that. And then snip into the curve as well. So just be careful not to cut through the stitches. So just go all the way around there. So you could do this with pink inches if you wish. Or just trim it so that it's gone quite close back to the stitch line. And then we'll do the same with the opposite side. So again, these two facing down. Let's pop this on top. Make sure those are straight, facing down that way. And we'll sew again. And again, because that's got a weight on it, it does kind of want to pull itself away. And around the edge. And around. I don't know if I meant to do a video for the original one of this. I can't remember. I don't think I did. Might have done one in a light, because I have got two of the bags. So normally, if I've got two, one's for a video and one's for instructions. So there, there may be a video. I can't remember. Maybe a video for this one. Right up to the edge of here. Make sure that's straight. Straight across. And then snip across the corners. And into the seam allowance. Just like we did before. So if you've gone for any of my new fabric, I'd love to know what, you've, what you're going to make with them. Um, I thought when I first got it, quilt, definitely. And I'll show you when I get it back. Hope, hopefully it'll be here by Wednesday. Um, I did make a, a quilt, like a table runner, using some of Melissa's um, seminal designs from the seminal patchwork that we did for the Half Yard Club for the block of the month, which I was really pleased with. And I actually made a bag with a seminal strip across the front as well, because they just go together really well when you're, um, when you're quilting them, when you're patchworking them. A video for an apron bag. If I can sew another day in the week, Alana. <laughs> uh, so let's just turn this the right side out. This is what I mean about having the, the straps quite close to the ends there, which is what I wanted. And I can press that. I'm not going to top stitch around it at the moment because we need to put the bag together first. But I will give it a press. Yes, Joyce, I would love to show you the fabrics again before I go. 
love to so excited about these so they only arrived yesterday uh, my samples only arrived yesterday so um, it's yeah, the, the only th things I've seen of these before are the strike-offs, so you get an idea of what the print's going to be like, but the, um, the quality's not very good on those. That's, that's kind of just what you get for approval. So to get the, um, the actual fabric of this quality, and remember it's all organic, is, uh, is really exciting. Patricia would make some lidded boxes from the Half Yard Club. That would be nice. Got a bit of fluff in there, look. Just going to go back over that one again. Let me trim that away because I've missed a little bit of the handle. Not the end of the world. Put that back in and just sew over it again. Can't have that. The rings are lovely, aren't they, Sharon? They they make a difference. I think anything with a little bit of hardware on gives a really shop-bought professional look. That's better. And pick that. Just got a thread caught in it there. Yeah, I'll press that again in just a second. So that's what we've got. And then we'll need to open this out. Oh, Carol, it is. It's like it is like having birthday and Christmas all in one go. It's like when you get a new book, or it's, you know, it's, it's just fabulous. Um, then I'm going to line up the seams here as best as I can. Line up the seams here, and sew all the way around, but not sew the cutout corners, and leave a turning gap in the lining as well. And let's sew down the side. So again, if pinning is easier, then pin. So line up the edges here. And I'm going to push the interfacing downwards. And then as I'm sewing, I'm just going to keep lining at the edges until I get to the seam here and make sure those are lined up together. Just lengthen the stitch a little bit. And seam here. As best you can. And then do the same on this side. So line up the edges. June doesn't think I did a video. I can't remember June. Um, let's do that. No, there wouldn't have been one, would there? Because uh, Kim would have put it on the website if there was. But you can, uh, these videos, the live ones, always stay on YouTube and Facebook. So if you wanted to, you could kind of watch back and skip all of the um, skip all of the talk if you if you just wanted the instructions for it. It would probably be the easiest thing to do. Let's just line the bottom up there. And so that machine sound really noisy. I apologise if it is. Oh, Rita's on a mission today. <laughs> getting more likes on YouTube. You know when we asked for them, I think it was June, wasn't it? Asking for likes and we got nearly 500, I think, on one, uh, on one video. That's going to be my turning gap. And let's sew all the way around. You know what I also like about this machine? Um, the reverse is as quick as going fast on my other Duke key, and I've had, I think, almost every machine that, that I've had. When you go backwards, it's slow, but this is like really quick. Love it. Let's get those rings out of the way. Well, thanks, June. 119 thumbs up. It's not bad going, though, is it? And then back down this side, like so. 430 likes on YouTube, really. I can't see all of the details from, from my screen at the moment. Right. It's quarter of an inch, Danny. It's really useful. So uh, it's quarter of an inch from the needle to the edge of the foot. So you can just use it as a guideline. So yeah, it is. It is quite narrow. Um, no, this one. 
It isn't my, my normal DX7, it's my straight stitch machine. It is the TL2200QVP Mini, apparently. Why don't they just call them Brenda or something? So I'm just sewing over the, um, oh, can't see me, over the cutout corners. And so we pull this open, squish it together. And so, so squish those seams in opposite directions. They don't need to be open. Yes, and it is, it's me, it's me or the duty. So this is the machine that I use um, when I'm sewing for me. Because um, it's really quick, only does a straight stitch, but I've had quite a few questions asking about it. So I just thought I'd show you what I use. Uh, let's open this. So do the same on the lining pieces. Nearly finished. Hello, Melody in Missouri. She says, good morning, everyone. We're just in afternoon here, Melody. It's uh, 20 past 12. Been here a long time, haven't we? I, I will show you my fabrics again in, the, in a second as well, if you just joined us. Um, I wonder why you struggle, Amanda. I always think they're, they're quite simple. So let's turn this the right side out. Um, can anyone recommend a heat erasable pen? I use friction pens, Karen. Come in loads of colours. Um, and in fact, I haven't tried any other heat erasable pens, so I can't really recommend any, anything else. Maybe somebody else could. Um, push that through. Left rather a small opening. That small opening may become bigger. If you hear stitches cracking, you know what that is. Out you come. So just pull that through, pull out the corners. That. Sorry about the noise from my rings. Then let's sew the opening closed in the lining. And so over there. Oh, do we we do sew line? Do we do sew line ones? Can't remember. Can't remember. You could put in a magnetic snap alone and put that in the lining before you sew it together. And then I'm just gonna push the lining inside the bag and then top stitch all the way around. And then we'll give it a jolly good press again. So I like to start top stitching on a, on a seam or somewhere out of the way. Longer stitch. And so all the way around. So it's quite hefty when it comes to the strap now. Not for this machine, it's not. And around the curve, and we'll just keep sewing. 156 thumbs up, thank you very much. Um, I'm glad you like it, Caroline. Right, so back into the corner. A bee in there, it's a smelly bee, Lodwin. Just stinks of petrol in here now. Uh, got to go, laptop battery going. Okay, Sylvia, see you next time. Um, still watching on YouTube, but can't comment. Okay. See you Wednesday. I'm going to make a rope bowl making class today. Oh, that's a nice idea. A rope bowl making class. I've done one of those for a long time. In fact, we did... Um, a similar, like a plant holder in uh, Mine and Kim's book, in the refashion book. Loads of fun. Right, so we have a noisy bag that's looking like that. I'm loving the rings. So let's put the straps on now. What did I do with the straps? There they go. So these 
I'm just going to fold over the ring here and so fold over the ring there and so so it's going to be like that so let's line that up there let's start in the middle and then go back and across again and snip off that and that and then we'll go over to this side and make sure the straps not twisted fold that over and so again I like to start in the middle when I'm doing this just so that the the ends are quite tidy snip off the back I'll tidy all these threads up later on and then the same with the opposite handle So folding over there, wrap it around there, and so. Well, oh, thank you, Angela. I like it was the hardware actually. Um, this this is one of the new ones that we've got on the website. We picked them up yesterday, and uh, it, it was so nice, you know, because you go into these. It's not very often that you get to go to a warehouse. We normally deal with suppliers online or over the phone, um, but this one we actually went to the warehouse. Oh, we were like kids in a sweetie shop rummaging around and finding things and we both saw these and just went, oh lovely so and then I was thinking all the way home what, what am I going to make with those rings um, and I just I just thought this bag would lend itself to it and make a real feature of the the handles on it as well right I'm going to give that a press before I show you it finished because that'll make a difference I'm glad you like it Linda thank you and I haven't got my um, what are they called? The the long the, mm, sleeve but things. But my ironing pad goes in there quite nicely. Right, seam roll. One of the nicest bows we've made. Oh, thank you, Carol. Thank you. So, given more time, I, I would have quilted it because uh, I just think it lends itself to a bit of quilting. And over there. Oh, glad. I'm glad you like it, Kaz. Taylor's hand, that's it. But the long, thin ones that, that are for sleeves, I normally use those inside the bag. Ah, Linda loves the bag. Thank you. Magnetic snap would work. Um, again, put that in the lining before you start putting it all together. Almost done. Um, so I just put a link to the rings on the website. If we do sell out, we can get hold of more of those. We might try some different size ones as well. So I do love a bit of hardware on the bag, I don't know about you. Put that side here. And I'm just going to, so I'll tidy up all my threads. I've got a few, a few loose threads knocking around. Um, I'm just gonna fold the base in and make it a bit squarer here. Just along that seam there. Give it a bit of a, a crisper edge, I think, if you do that. <laughs> Jackie's placed four orders this morning. The website may crash. <laughs> uh, D-rings, yes, would work really well. Caroline as well. Uh, we've got back in stock D-rings too. I, I just love the, the huge rings. I think they're quite quite different they're quite unusual but yes I think d-rings would look really nice too so I've got lots of little bits of threads but I'll cut those away after because I think that's about done they work really well don't they I love those rings and it makes a real feature of the straps so the one behind me here is um, one of the ones from the pattern which I actually use viscose for that one which as you probably know is a very fine very fluid fabric but it just goes to show that if you have the right kind of interfacing you can make even very fine fabrics sturdy enough to make a bag so that was deck of a light and I think that's what I've recommended on the instructions this one I've used H640 which is your um, fusible fleece 
but it's a big enough bag if you wanted to make it more sturdy that you could use a foam either the uh the what we're calling it styleville is it styleville or the bosal that we have on our website oh thank you very much monique oh yes we must get some rivets that would look really nice wouldn't it that, that would really finish it off so uh, yeah just a rivet on each each end of the strap i think would look really nice so that's that quite a cute bag and then if you want to put a magnetic snap that that's how it would look when it's fastened um or why not put two one at each side at the top that would be quite an an unusual one as well um i'm glad you like it helen thank you very much yeah really pleased with that you did ask to have a look at my new fabrics again so let me unplug the iron and i'll show you quickly before i go um where did i put them down here so again they are if you want if you didn't see earlier this is my new fabric range there are 10 of them feet would be good yes lisa and you put like, like a solid base in the in the bottom of it as well um what was that about two bags together Ooh, stuck to that uh, can you put the two bags together so we can see the difference with the interlining? Yes, Linda, of course. Let me scoot backwards. And I just grab this one. So that's the Decaville light, which is a bit uh, kind of papery. So it's not firm, firm. It's still simple to sew, but it's it does give a nice crisp look to it. And this one is with the fleece. So it's just softer. So if you were quilting it, then fleece would be a nice, you can't quilt that, you just see stitches on the top, it wouldn't, wouldn't create texture. But this one I think would look really nice um, if it was quilted. And just see if that was, this one will stand up alone. So it's just got a bit flat. Because it's firmer. This one is a little bit softer, as you can see. So that's kind of the main difference with them. Okay. Right, so I can't remember what they're all called again. Um, the whole range is called A Country Walk, and there are 10 fabrics all together. They're on pre order, so if you order now, they will be sent out as soon as we get them. The shipment date that we've had is the 22nd of June. If we get them in any sooner, then you'll get them sooner as well. So you can either go for them individually. Uh, if you go to new arrivals on the website, oh, where we go, June, 185, 188, 189. Oh, thumbs up, thank you. Um, uh, go to new arrivals on the website and you'll see them all there. So you can go for them individually and that will be by the half metre. So if you wanted a metre of this one, order two and it will come joined up in one piece. If you wanted to order one metre of each of five, those will be pre-cut. So you'll get five separate one metre pieces um, and that is the first collection. So it'll be one metre of each of those and you will have a 10% discount, which means that if you have um, your... your uh, member discount code from the Half Yard Club, you get an extra 10% on top of that. So club members, in effect, will have 20% discount when you order the collection. So that's the first five. And then these are the second five. So one. So it's the same deal with these. If you wanted to order five one metre pieces, you get the reduced price. So one, two, three. Again, all available individually, but if you wanted to order them all together. Oh, hi, Kate, yeah, I'm still here. I know, an hour and a half. I knew it would be a long one today. So those are the second five. So that would be a collection. If you wanted all five of those, then um, you, that's where you get the saving. If you wanted to go for all 10 one metre pieces, they're still 10% off and club members will get 10% off that as well. So that makes it 20% off for club members when you add it up like that. So those are the fabrics, all based on my, well, they are all my sketches. I should bring the sketches down for you on Wednesday and show you if you like. 
um, of things that I see when I'm walking the dog around the woods. So there's the hare and the fox and the hawk, could be a kite, can't remember, and uh, deer and um, yeah, that's the kind of animals that we see. Should have put hedgehogs on there really, shouldn't I? Now we do have coordinating fabrics and these are available now. So this is um, organic cotton, it's, it's beautiful quality. And this is a brand new range of organic cottons from Make and Believe that we've got in for you. So these are the ones that match. You can go for a brown, which goes really well, I think, with the ones with the trees on particularly. This one is the ochre, which looks beautiful with the foxes. And it also goes really well with the animals on that one and that one for that matter. There is a moss, which is the one that I use for the handles on my bag. That goes with all of them. And the one that I use for the lining is the light taupe, which is a perfect match for these two with the, the linen colours in the background. And then this was quite a surprise, but it goes really well. can't remember the name, something purple. Um, again, they're all under new in because it, it tonally, it just goes with so many of the prints. It just works really well. So if you wanted a plane to go with it, these are available now. Um, so those will be sent straight out. These ones to pre-order, we'll get them out to you as soon as we've actually got them in. So it could be another, another month. 203 likes now, thank you very much. Um, so I've just dropped them into it. We do have a pale green as well. Oh, there we go. Which, I don't think much is perfectly enough, so I'm not going to show you that. Um, so yes, that, that's those, really exciting. Thank you very much for ordering. And um, I say we'll get them out to you as quickly as we possibly can. And just to stress again, these are organic cottons, and which I was saying earlier on, if you have a, do a little bit of research onto organics, because it's not just about not using pesticides, it's about the lifestyle of the workers as well. So it's, uh, it's the way to go, I think. Certainly all of my fabrics and Kim's fabrics, she's got a new range coming out soon, um, will from now on with Craft Cotton Company be on organic cottons. So that's what we do. And the planes are brand new and some of them have been put together specifically to go with our fabric. So that's really exciting as well. OK, so I better go and do some work. I don't know what time it is. It's 20 to 1. I've been here for ages today. Um, I shall see you again on Wednesday. Does organic cotton fabric have a different feel? No. It feels, it's, well, you know when you've got a really nice quality fabric and it feels smooth, that, that's what it feels like. But you would never know, if you compared this to a quality um, quilting fabric, you wouldn't know the differences. It, it feels exactly the same. Um, can you put two of I've done that, Linda. That's right, Lisa, it's nice to have you back again. Hope you're all right. Uh, Poppers would work well, yes, thank you. That's all right, Pat, it is a pleasure. Yeah, Kim Strawberry Range. We may maybe get that on pre-order in a couple of weeks' time. She's just got her samples of that one through as well. It's beautiful. Um, hello, Zainab. I'm fine. How are you? Um, thank you, Rita. Nice to have your company again. I really appreciate you getting up so early in New York as well to join us. Um, Zainab's in Dubai. Hello, Angela. Thank you, too. Uh, glad you like the fabric. Thank you very much. OK, so Wednesday I shall put together um, some interlinings and interfacings. And we have, uh, what's that? What's that? see you Saturday. Da -da 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 -da. Um, don't know what I've done with that. Sorry, I'm just, just doing a little bit of housekeeping while I'm here. Um, so we'll have a look at different types of interfacing. Again, I can only do the ones I've actually got on the website because I don't have any others. Um, but we'll have a chat about the, the foams and the fleeces and the G700s and H200s and 250s. And I know it can be very confusing, so we'll see if we can do something there. Oh, is it Mother's Day tomorrow? Happy Mother's Day for everyone in the States tomorrow. Uh, hi, Linda. Good morning. Just go in there. Uh, right. So again, see you Wednesday at four o'clock. Um, I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you like the bag. And again, if you've just joined us or if you just wanted to watch back, the videos will stay on YouTube. So if you just wanted to make the bag, then um, you can fast forward through all the chat 
And that is, again, it's download on the website. Um, I did put the link to the live holding in to Oh, thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you, Denise. Oh, and Canada is it? Okay. Oh, happy Father's Day in Canada too. Didn't know that. Uh, need to be so in general because I, uh, thank you very much, Alan. That is available to pre-order on the website as well. I'm glad you like them, Patricia. Okay, then I shall I shall see you again on Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, whatever it is you're doing. Thanks for joining me today. Bye bye.